Hey, hi, hello. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute since I've uploaded a video, but I'm back. I'm ready to get back into this YouTube thing and finish up the year strong. So just a quick little update. Um, we are in our final two weeks of school. So if you had followed along with my videos before, I had been doing the tutoring after school and that started at like the end of January. And once that started, I tried keeping up with this, but I was just so exhausted, exhausted at the end of the day, I, I couldn't do it. Um, but that's done now. It's been great being done with that. Um, it's just, even if it was only an extra hour and a half, it just drained me being here every day with kids till five. It turned into a long day. So my lesson I've learned from that, because I've always done it, but I'm realizing that I don't need to feel like I need to do it just because I'm one of the younger single teachers. Um, next year I probably won't do it just because it made me tired, cranky, miserable, and that's not worth the little bit of extra money I made. So if that's something you can relate to, then just know your mental health is more important than feeling obligated to do something. So um, now that that's done, I'm feeling more refreshed and um, ready to end out the year. So today it is Tuesday, May 18th. Our last day is the 28th, so it's the end of the day right now that I'm recording this. Um, so we actually have eight days of school left now. And I just decided I wanted to come on and share some of the activities we are doing um, to end out the year. So I'm gonna probably have, I don't know how many, but I'm gonna say probably like at least four videos of different activities that you can do at the end of the year. Um, the one I'm gonna share today is one that I will do almost every year. Some of them are just because we've gotten some money from the PTO because we couldn't take field trips this year. So they're um, allowing us to do some extra activities with our students since COVID doesn't allow for us to um, go on field trips. So today is one you can do any time of the year. It doesn't have to be the end of the year, but it was awesome because we are kind of, you know, through our content, we've finished our state testing. We're still, I'm trying to keep our normal routine, otherwise these um, weeks can turn into feeling like they go on forever. Um, but today was a STEM challenge that I want to share with you. And it's, um, again, you, you could do this anytime during the year, but it was really, really, really especially came in handy today um, towards the end of the year. So let's talk about it. So the challenge we did today was building roller coasters. Um, there's tons of like ideas on this. You can just Google it and you can come up with different ones. I've done it a few different ways, but I'll kind of share with what we did today. So to introduce it, I started this right away. I just told my kids we were gonna be doing something. I had them come to the carpet and I turned on a YouTube video and it was a point of view. Um, you can just search roller coaster POV and it was a roller coaster point of view. And I just had them watch that and they were excited. It was kind of funny. I'll put in some pictures here, but they're like, put your hands up, put your hands up. And they still had no idea why I'm showing them this. They didn't really question it. <laughs> but so we watched actually two of the, the POVs. And then after that, I just had them talk about my like, okay, what did you guys notice about both of those roller coasters? And they set, kind of noticed like right away they go up a big hill and we talked about the momentum then and um, just kind of why roller coasters are designed that way, just how you need that momentum. The big hill needs to be the first hill because otherwise you won't have enough momentum to go over it. And then I, um, from there, let them know we're gonna be making STEM roller coasters. And I told them that, gave them, went through the objective. So um, the things that I told them is you're not gonna make like a roller coaster car, you're just gonna use a marble. So you want your marble to be able to s go down and through your roller coaster and make it to the end. And um, we talked about how your first hill, like where you're starting your marble, you can't have a higher hill after that. Cause if you drop your marble and it goes down, it's not gonna make it up that hill. And that's why roller coasters always have that big hill at the beginning. Cause that kind of pushes the roller coaster through the rest of the track. Um, and then from there, I just said, try to, you know, add in some turns and said, we'll be looking for different things. Like we're gonna kind of vote on whose looks the coolest. Um, we're gonna see who can get the most turns in their track and still have their marble make it to the end. Um, we're gonna see who's can be like the fastest. So I just kind of had some different categories for things for them to think about as they were building theirs. And um, from there, they had, I had a ton of cardboard because a lot of teachers are doing plays and stuff right now. So they had leftover cardboard from props. So I took that. I had some solo, um, like red solo cups they could use. I had paper plates, they could use paper, tape. I kind of said they could like build off of the tables or use the chairs as part of like their structural part. Um, and I didn't really limit the supplies. I just, I really like seeing how creative they can get with this. And um, after they kind of get a starting point, it's always fun to just be like, okay, see what you can add to it now. Can you add some turns or a tunnel or this or that? So they like kind of getting a starting point and then building off from there. Um, so let me, you know, throw in some examples of what students did today. One thing I would suggest is having, you know, 
opportunities for them to work for a long time. But you know, if you have your kids work on something for an hour and a half at once, they're not gonna stay focused. So we actually started working for about 10 to 15 minutes before music and gym. The second they came back in, I let them get back to work. And then we had about 30, 35 minutes until we went for outdoor recess. And then so we took that break, came back in, I let them work on it again for another half hour. So, and then after that, we were ready to test. So they could have worked on it longer, but having those breaks in there really allowed them to stay focused and engaged in it. So if you can set it up that way, that's awesome. Um, but again, they can do this quicker if you need to. I just didn't really give them a time constraint because like I said, they can keep adding to it. And this is one where they're really excited to work on it. So um, it really, I mean, it took up a lot of time. They had fun. They had a problem solve. There was a ton of collaboration, um, collaboration, problem solving, you know, just kind of like the um, engineer designing, thinking, you know what I'm talking about going on there. So. Definitely recommend this one. Like I said, it doesn't have to be the end of the year, but it is very nice here. Like when I want to make the end of the last days fun, I want to kind of make it so they're not getting too, you know, out of sync or out of our routine, but also something that'll keep them engaged. So 10 out of 10 would recommend and stay tuned for some of the other things we're doing here to end the school year. So thanks for checking back in and I promise we'll be more active on this page. See you next time. Bye.